metals that fracture like an eggshell, rubber that fractures like glass. This isn't fiction. This is actually how materials can behave sometimes, and it can sometimes get us into trouble. Hi, my name is Anissa Ramirez. Welcome to my lab at Yale University and to a special edition of Science Explained on the Titanic. When the Titanic made its maiden voyage from England to New York, it was struck by an iceberg off the coast of Newfoundland and sank. The tale of the Titanic points to the iceberg as the sole villain. But that's not the case. There were other culprits as well. You see, the story of the Titanic is actually a story about materials. Materials can change their properties based on the temperatures that they experience. Let's look at this in action. Here I have a rubber hose. The rubber is very pliable and stretchy. However, let's look at a piece of rubber that's experienced liquid nitrogen temperatures. It no longer acts like rubber, but it acts like a glass. So you can see materials will change their properties significantly based on the temperatures that they experience. And it's this glass transition that rubber can experience that actually was the cause for the accident for the Space Shuttle Challenger. Now metals too can change their properties. They can become ductile or flexible to brittle, just like an eggshell. When the Titanic was in seawater, the seawater was 28 degrees Fahrenheit or minus two degrees Celsius. These temperatures are colder than freezing. Now had the Titanic been in slightly warmer waters, the metal would have been ductile. So a collision with the iceberg would have caused a dent or a buckling, sort of like you would see in a car accident. But at those frigid temperatures, the metal acted like it was more like an eggshell. Now let's look at this behavior in action. I want to show you how you can drastically change a metal's properties based on the temperature it experiences. Now this is not exactly what happened to the Titanic, but you'll see a drastic effect. Here I have a bobby pin. It's made out of high carbon steel and it's very, very flexible. Let's see what happens when I heat this up and then cool it very quickly. All right, let's do that. I'm going to heat it to red hot with this blowtorch, and then we're going to quench it in the water. Let's see what happens. See, it's red hot. Quench it in the water. Now, let's see what happens if we pull this apart. Wow, that took almost nothing. From a science point of view, that's really cool. But from an engineering and design point of view, that's pretty unfortunate. So you see that materials can change their properties based on the temperatures that they experience. Now there's also new theories that point to the rivets, the rivets of the Titanic. There were over three million of these rivets that held the Titanic together. Now the way that they made rivets back then was very different from the way that we made rivets today. Back then they had lots of impurities, lots of junk in it, and lots of junk in a rivet actually makes the rivet very weak. A weak rivet means that we have weak joints between the sheets that are holding the Titanic together. And so in a collision, something would just unzip. So as you can see, materials were a great factor in the Titanic. The tale of the Titanic is really about understanding materials. Had the engineers back then known what we know now, perhaps there would have been many more survivors. We know now that the temperatures that materials experience affect their properties. And with the many advances that we've made in materials today, an event like the Titanic never would have been in history. I'm Anissa Ramirez. Thank you for joining me in my lab. And I hope you'll join us for another edition of Science Explained.